Hi, I'm Ray Scott, and welcome to another episode of Visual Art Photography. Shooting sunsets. Is that cliche? Probably. Are there too many sunset pictures out there? Probably to that, too. So why do so many people shoot sunsets? Why are we obsessed with capturing sunsets? Well, I think the answer is pretty easy. They are incredible. They are beautiful. They are awe-inspiring phenomena. We just feel like we have to grab sunset pictures. And you know something? It's not a bad idea to have a few shots in your portfolio. But shooting a sunset isn't as easy as just taking out your camera or your cell phone and firing away. You may capture something really tremendous, but there are good chances that you won't. There's a lot that goes into capturing the perfect sunset, aside from just having a great looking sky. It takes a little bit of thought, it takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of energy. I've got some great tips for capturing gorgeous sunsets, so stick around for that. Two really quick pieces of business before we get going. Uh, one, if you're really big into macro photography, uh, you should know that I have some macro photography tutorials on this channel, but I also have another channel called Macro World where it is dedicated solely to macro photography. And if you're interested in that, I have a link down below in the description so you can get there directly. Also, if you want to subscribe to this or that channel, it's as easy as clicking on that subscribe button that you see on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Click on that, then click the bell icon, and then click all notifications. And that will make sure that you are up to date with all of the latest videos that I put out. All right, sunsets. A lot goes into it to make sure that you come up with the best sunset pictures possible. We're going to go through that now. Here's the setup, here's what you're looking for, and here's how to do it. So for our setup, the first thing we're going to want to do is preferably shoot at a lower ISO, say of 100 or 200, just to keep any kind of digital noise down to a minimum. That means that at this time of night, uh, or this time of evening, you're probably going to want a tripod or some other sturdy support. Now you can shoot handheld and you can bump up your ISO as the light goes down, but I found in my experience it's best to travel with some kind of a tripod. Also, it's handy to have a variety of focal lengths so that you can use telephoto and wide angle, that kind of thing. Okay, so for the first type of photo to be aware, the first type of uh, sunset to be aware of is in using silhouettes. All right, so basically what you're doing is you're exposing for the sky so that you make sure that you get all of that beautiful color in the sky and then things that are in the foreground are basically black. Now you can see in this photo that uh, everything is pretty much the sky, the color, and then pretty much Everything else is in silhouette. A little bit of the boat there on the left and the right, those two boats have a little bit of, you can see a little bit into them, but the idea here is to have silhouettes. So you've got that beautiful color in the sky and you've got those, uh, those gentlemen in the boat, they are standing up um, and it, they're in silhouette. This is the easiest kind of sunset photo to take because you're talking about exposing for the sky. That's all there is to it exposure for the sky right here. Same thing. Everything else has gone black. Same thing here. There's a tree here. We're not trying to see into the tree. We're not trying to see the bark or anything like that. All we're worried about here is getting the beautiful color in the sunset. So you're exposing for the sky. Same thing here. I call this the blood sky and it's just raging and it's beautiful. And the trees in the foreground are in silhouette. Now, this brings us to our second tip, and that's the lens, cho lens choice. And that's because, as you can see there, the sun appears to be quite large. Now, as the sun sets, if there is a lot of haze and atmospheric things like that going on, the sun, you've seen it, the sun tends to be very, very large. But still, when you take a picture of it, if you're using your uh, wide-angle lens or you're using... Um, say, a, a cell phone that's not set to telephoto, something like that, 
that sun is going to get very small all of a sudden. So if you want that sun to be rather large, it's best to use a telephoto lens. Now, I don't have a really long telephoto uh, lens. Mine goes up to 200. I used to use a 300. This was a 300 used for this one. The sun was going down rapidly. You have to work quickly too, because that sun, when it gets to the horizon, really moves down rather rapidly. But you could see the haze there. And as it, the sun was going down, it was getting larger and larger. And I managed to pull in a little bit of that size with 300 millimeters. So be aware of that. Here, I'm actually cheating, okay? This isn't actually a, a sunset. It's a sunrise, but as the sun was coming up, I pulled that in with 300 millimeters as well. Again, I don't use my 300 millimeter lens so much anymore, but I, I do go up to 200 millimeters, and you can sometimes do some amazing things with that too. Of course, if you're doing this and you're trying to capture something in the foreground, you have to be aware that uh, you want to use an aperture of, say, f16 or f22 so that everything can be pretty much in focus. But that brings us to another tip, which is the foreground element. Now, here you go. Why not use something in the foreground to make, to kind of highlight the sunset, if you will. Sun's going down here. I've decided to shoot through something and it's in silhouette. So again, the sunset wins but you have a foreground element right here, right there, right in front of you, and that captures your attention too. So using a foreground element for your sunsets can sometimes be really, really effective. Here, some of those grasses that are coming up that catch your attention as well. Or here, railroad tracks leading you in to the scene, and you can see the train actually down the tracks. You can see the light there, and then you have the mountains in back, and you have the sunset. Not so much in the foreground. I mean, it's it's there. It's it's the subject. So using a uh, foreground subject matter or just subject matter in general can highlight a sunset and make it more than just oh that's a nice sunset, and then you're standing just anywhere and you snap the shot. It takes a little bit more and it adds a little bit more to your image, at least I think so. You may also want to use water reflections. This is tip number four. Water, still water, really reflects the sky beautifully. So here, the sun is really low. It's starting, the clouds are starting to pick up the color, but look at it in the water. You can see that the water is reflecting what's going on in the sky. So you almost get a double sunset effect. And take note that there is a foreground element. There are grasses and things like that in front of the water and they're in silhouette. So I was exposing here again for the sky and letting everything else go black. Same thing here, all right? Foreground grasses in silhouette, background grasses in silhouette and trees, exposing for the sky, but using the water as a reflective thing. Here, I'm not even including the sky it's just the water. But you know that there's a sunset going on because you can see that amazing color and you can see um, that the water's low and something's coming up from the water, but you can also see the reflection of that object as well. So water reflections, you don't always have to show the sky to show a sunset. You can see the sunset in the water. Same thing here. Not such a vibrant sunset, just a little bit of color, but you get the idea where you have a little bit of it coming through in the water. And certainly the tree there is being reflected in the water too. Okay, how about seeing everything? Now we were talking about silhouettes and how you expose for the sky. Probably the most difficult kind of sunset to take is one that shows you color in the sky and also you have a foreground the way your eye sees it, not the way your camera sees it necessarily, but the way your eye sees it, because our eyes can see a lot more exposure than a camera sensor can. So how do you achieve this? Well, you can expose for the sky, but then your foreground is going to be too dark, or you can expose for the foreground, but then the sky is going to be washed out and you're going to lose all of that beautiful color. You can compromise and kind of go halfway. What I find, what I do is I go more for the sky, but I make sure I do have some exposure for the foreground, and then I post-process it 
and I bump up the shadows, uh, the shadow area, so that it levels out to what it looked like while I was standing there. Now, some other people like to use high dynamic range photography, HDR, you've heard of that. It all depends. You know, you can take several pictures and, and then process them together and have your HDR shot. This is not HDR. It's just simply exposing for the sky, but not totally for the sky, and then balancing it out in Lightroom later on. You can use any kind of software you want. Same thing here. This is so that you can get the color in the sky, but you can still see what's going on in the foreground. And it really is the way your eye sees it. I mean, this is the way it looked to me when I was standing in front of it. Same thing here. You can see the homes, you can see the rocks, and you can see that the sky is exposed for that sunset. Same thing here. You can even, even see the snow. You can see the white snow over there and you can see the reflections in the water. You can see the sky. It's all there the way my eyes saw it. So those are a few tips for you to create really um, good sunsets and to make sure that you get all the detail and all the vibrancy that you want. So I think we've just seen that a lot goes into taking sunset photos, whether it's making sure that your camera is really stable, whether it's the lens choice, uh, whether it's making sure that you have something interesting in the foreground. Maybe you need to use reflections. All kinds of things can go into making that perfect sunset photo. And of course, probably the most important thing, making sure that your exposure is spot on. All right, so hopefully that gets you going uh, for your sunset photography. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you, it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.